on one 2026 has just arrived earlier this week i'm really excited to show you a lot of the new features in the new program this year now we're not going to be doing a full rundown of the program we're just going to be showing you what is new in on one 2026 and what is upgraded to help you decide if it is worth purchasing or not now i'm austin jackson a landscape photographer based here in southern utah I'm really excited to show you guys all of these new features. I do want to mention before we jump in there, this video is not sponsored at all. On One isn't paying me to make this video. In fact, they don't even know that I'm making this video, but I do have an affiliate link down below. So if you do watch this video and decide to purchase the software, please do me a favor, use that affiliate link. It gets me a really small kicker and it doesn't cost you anything. It just makes it a little bit more worthwhile for me to make these review videos, but I truly have no skin in the game, whether you purchase this software, whether you stick with Lightroom or go with many of the other options that are out there. So let's go ahead and jump right in there. First things first, let's just talk about some of the quality of life improvements. First quality of life improvement here is you have a little bit of customization options when it comes to the workspace. So when I go down to window, you have layers and properties. Right now I have them nested left, but by default, they start out nested right when you download this. So the problem, in my opinion, is you have so much stuff going on over here, layers, you have all the properties stuff, you have this stuff up here, you have your you know, develop tab here, you gotta scroll down, the sliders are just really clunky and kinda in your way. So you just go up to window, you go to layers, you can have it um, float if you want them to float somewhere on the screen, uh, or my personal favorite is just nest left, and then I usually do the same thing for properties, I'm gonna go nest left. Now you have all of that over here and you might not even use these on every photo so you can just close this down if you want the image to be bigger and open it back up when you need it. Now the customization options are nice to be able to do this but I do still wish you could close some more things down because as on one gets more powerful, more and more things get added and the screen is just really busy compared to like the simple workflow and workspace of something like Lightroom or Luminar, which does have a little bit simpler and easier to look at um, user interface here, but it's not too bad. I do like having a little bit of customization options. I hope they take this a step further in the next update. Now, one of the nicest new settings is the ability to combine masks much, much easier. So let's say we go into our local tab here and we want to make, let's just say a background selection. We'll see how this selection does. You can see right over here, everything behind the bison is selected just fine. Now maybe we wanna darken that down. Uh, the first thing to note is just how much better the selections are this year than in last year's version. They've done a really nice job on these AI selections. You can still see a little bit right here that's not super great. Um, but it looks much better. You know, I'm already reducing this one stop, you know, around here, you can see a little bit of ghosting, but this is much better at filling in the gaps than what was available last year. Um, so they've made some improvements there now. So now you have the option to merge masks or combine masks together. One thing that I love doing when I do something like this, like darken the background is grab a new mask layer, go down to gradient, and I'm going to subtract. Now I can flip this around and I can make this a little bit softer and just make this adjustment a little bit more realistic looking. Now, when I look at my mask here uh, and I toggle this adjustment, you can see it is not selecting the bison at all and it's kind of using a gradient on the background. So it combines the two masks together. Really nice to have that to work with. Um, I think that's a really useful tool. You can do the same thing in Lightroom, and so it's nice to see them introduce that here because there's virtually unlimited possibilities. Now, next, you have a Resize AI 2026 is built into On One, so you don't have to go to any third party, uh, or it's not third party, but you don't have to export the image and then import it back in. Uh, so it's much more seamless of a workflow. So we'll use this image for an example. Let's say I wanna crop this thing down because there's a lot going on. I don't need all this in the background. So let's just crop this image down to really focus in on this great gray owl here. Maybe we're gonna go somewhere like that. Now the problem that you're gonna notice when I zoom in is you'll notice you know, we're missing a little bit of resolution because we're cropping down so much. So you can actually use On One Resize AI, super simple and easy here. Just click the more option and then go to resize AI. Then you have the option to resize your photo. This all pops up, you know, this is all the same dialogue. I didn't do any cut there. This is simply just doing it live. And let's say we wanted to increase the height to like 8,000 and the width will snap. 
then you can zoom in and check out the results if you want. It does take a little bit of rendering time. I usually do the highest quality. Um, you can hit OK. You can do some additional sharpening if you want as well. And it does appear that it does a little bit of denoise in the background for you also when it upscales. Uh, so I'll show you the results. I'm going to cancel this because this takes a few minutes to load out. And so I've already made this result before I made this video. And I will look at this one here. Now you can see, look at how much detail there is in the face of the owl in that same crop. Now it has added some weird artifacting here a little bit, but these are kind of hit or miss. But for the most part, everything looks really good compared to our original image here. If I zoom in on the face of the owl, you can see much, much less detail on the on the resized image, much more detail. So it's nice to have that resize uh, within uh, the program so that you don't have to like export it out or do anything like that. It just kind of makes the workflow a little bit faster. Now on one has really simplified the masking tools by adding what they're calling one click masking. So literally if you want to make an adjustment here, say I'm going to make a local adjustment, you can click over here. You can also grab your masking tools over here, but to just grab a subject adjustment, it is that easy to make a selection of the subject. You can do that with background, with sky, you can do that with many of the other options, but that one click subject background and sky adjustments, really, really nice to have. They make it really easy to go about masking here in on one, even as someone who might not have any experience, it's very, very easy to use. All right, now perhaps one of the most substantial improvements in my opinion is the updated effects panel. Now you can click over here, once you're on develop, click over to effects, click to add a filter. So now you've got the option to search and then they have categorized um, a few of these into a few different boxes here. So there is a few new features here and we're going to cover all four of the new effects. All of them are really nice uh, to use in certain circumstances. So let's talk about it. The first one is my least favorite, but it is one that I will mention. It's called double exposure. Now you click to add double exposure and this does a double exposure, obviously, which is where you combine two images or two exposures together. Now I have a really hard time finding uh, one that will look good, but there is tons of different options um, that are already in here. And you can even import your own images. You know, you can do something like forest, um, maybe you want to adjust that. You can see there's so many presets. I mean, something like that can look pretty cool. Adjust the opacity there, make it stronger or weaker. Um, but double exposure is pretty fun. You can, I haven't done any cuts here, so you can see just how quickly um, I made this selection. Super fast, super easy, um, and it's definitely something that you can play around with for those of you guys that are a little more artsy in your photo editing. Uh, if you are trying to just create, you know, standard photo edits, this probably isn't something you're going to use, but you know, super easy, super quick for me to make that just in less than a minute. And next we've got motion blur. This one is a really fun one. Uh, where is it in here? Motion. It's just called motion. Uh, now you can do a few different types of blur. Let's just increase the amount all the way so that we can see everything that's going on. So you have pan, you have zoom, uh, zoom would be like in to out. You have twist, which is like circular. Uh, that one's pretty crazy. You have a uh, fast car as well. I mean, there's so many different options. Uh, fast car makes a selection of the subject. These are of course um, just styles. They're like presets, but you can go down here and adjust them yourself. I usually like to use pan uh, because that protects the subject, which is usually what we want to do. Now, if I increase this a bunch uh, and then I can adjust the angle, you know, for this one, we wouldn't want up and down. We would want side to side just like that. Increase the smoothing if you want, not necessary in this photo. You can increase the feather if you want to kind of blur your subject just a hair, but with subject selection on, and of course, you know, you can protect background if you just wanted to blur the subject. Wouldn't make sense for this photo, but for a lot of photos that may make sense. Uh, you can see that that just kind of makes my image feel a little more alive. Like here, you can see that he's running, uh, but here you can really see that he's running because that background is blurred out. It does a really nice job with that selection there. Um, it's nice and sharp. I am not finding, you know, it's protecting those hairs pretty well. Um, could it be slightly better? Probably. Um, but I mean, not a whole lot better. It does a really, you know, these hairs down here are kind of cut off. It does a really nice job for, you know, two clicks and less than one minute you can apply that effect. 
The next effect here is called the depth lighting or cinematic depth lighting. This one is really interesting. Um, it detects where your subject is based on uh, these presets, and then you can make an adjustment to your image. So essentially what this is doing is darkening the background, brightening the subject. So it's kind of creating that nice lighting look. Um, and, you know, this makes my subject pop quite a bit more. This is probably way too extreme. You could go in and turn down the opacity, make it look more realistic. But just for the sake of this video, let's keep it nice and strong. Now you can adjust the transition if you want the transition to be a little bit smoother uh, or more feathered. And then you can adjust the depth if you want it to affect more or less in the image. Um, probably about where it was at at base was probably pretty good. And then you can adjust the temperature of the foreground if I wanted to make her maybe a little warmer and the background a little bit cooler. You could do that too. So a lot of options here. Depth lighting is pretty fun. It's able to detect the depth in your image so it can see that you know our subject here is close. It's in focus whereas the background that's out of focus needs to be darkened. So that is depth lighting for you. Now the last option is one that a lot of landscape photographers will like. Uh, and this one is called split field. I'm kind of 50-50 on how I feel about this one. This is something that you would typically do in uh, like Photoshop, something that's called focal length blending. Now, this is where you're going to make one part of your image uh, basically zoomed in without adjusting the other part. So this is nice for a subject like this where uh, our subjects are very small, our foreground is very big, but we want to make those subjects bigger. So you can adjust this, you can turn the radius, you can feather it just a little bit more. Um, you know, you have to make sure you're not overlapping like a bush or something because you can see then it's, um, it's you know, it's a little bit over feathered there. As I toggle this, you can see it's not realistic. But if you have it on something like the rocks, you know, you lower the feather, you turn it a little bit just like that, you can create realistic looking images. You know, it's hard to do this frequently. It, it's not going to work on a lot of images, but it will work on some images. So it's something that's worth trying that you can wor uh, work on doing if you just want to make that subject a little bit closer. That's probably too big. So let's try somewhere like right in there. Just make that subject a little bit stronger. So that's the split field for you. Give that one a try, especially if you're a landscape photographer, but you do need an image with a mid ground that doesn't have a lot of details. Otherwise, you won't get that seamless blend and it'll look unrealistic. All right, now the last thing here kind of for digital photographers that I think you might like is something that they recommend using for buildings, but I've actually enjoyed using it for trees. I think it would work for either one. It's going to be down here in the transform. You toggle that on. Then you can hit uh, one of the presets. You know, previously you could always do this, but it was always kind of like a balancing act of making everything look great. So now instead of having the balancing act, just hit vertical or horizontal or keystone. However, keystone is like a square if you have, you know, multiple spots on the image. Uh, this was going to work well for like cityscapes, buildings, stuff like that. Horizontal is going to work well for any scene where the lines are going horizontal in the scene. Maybe also buildings, but for trees, we're going to want vertical. Now we can adjust the top and the bottom here and the top and the bottom, and we're just lining it up on the trunks of these trees. Then we'll hit apply. You can see before and after. So this just straightens the image for you. Uh, it's a nice way you know, for your landscapes if you want your trees to be straighter or uh, for your portraits, it really helps to, like if you have cityscapes or any straight lines in the background, anything like that, it's going to help. So that is the transform tool. That is also another new one. All right, so that pretty much covers the new features for digital photographers. There is a couple other film type features that I think um, most of you guys watching this video aren't going to care about. But if you do want to check those out, go to On One's website. They've got little videos of all the new features. But hopefully this is like the short and sweet video that covers all those new features so you can determine if it's worth spending the money to upgrade or buy On One for the first time, whether you're someone that's already used On One in the past and you're trying to determine whether you want to spend the money to get the next year's version or maybe you're a Lightroom user looking for a new program to use. Um, hopefully this video will help you out. If you guys have any questions about um, On One 2026, do let me know down below in the comments. I'll make sure to get back to you, hopefully help you to make a better informed purchase decision. Um, and again, if you guys are gonna purchase a software, do me a favor, please use that link down below. It gets me a really small kicker and just helps make it a little bit more worth it for me to make these videos for you guys. Otherwise, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to help you guys become better photographers week by week, giving you videos that are going to help you improve every single week. Thank you guys so much for being here again. I'm Austin Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time.